Hello and welcome back to my YouTube channel or welcome to my YouTube channel if it's your first time here. I am Sammy Hall and today I'm officially changing the name of this series from Paint and Mystery to Art and Mystery because I realized I'm not always going to want to do a painting. Sometimes I'm going to want to do something else like journaling, uh, coloring in, marker art, illustration, scrapbooking, whatever. And I don't want to limit myself. Mm -mm. Not on this channel. Anyway, um, last week was my birthday and I bought myself a present from me to me and it's this absolutely beautiful journal. It's like a Bible journal. Look how beautiful that cover is. So inside there's like a coloring in, journaling, Bible verses. It's beautiful. And I want to decorate the first page with you guys. So that is what we are doing today. But at the same time, we are going to be chatting about Miss Daisy the Malker. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. She is very well known as being South Africa's first female serial killer. Uh, I don't know about you guys, but when I was little, whenever my hair was messy, which was often and still is, my parents would say, go and brush your hair, you look like Daisy the Malker. You know? And I always thought they said Daisy D. Malker. So I thought it's a random lady named Daisy who likes to milk cows. That's what I thought. Anyway, it isn't though. No, she was a serial killer. Uh, also, fun fact, or maybe not so fun, apparently I am related to her. Mm -hmm. I have no proof of this other than I've, I've heard so through my family. We are apparently related far longs through my grandmother's side, so it's always good and fine to find out you are related to a famous person, but can it maybe not be a serial killer? Hmm? Can I maybe have better role models? Anyway, I am rambling, so let's jump into the video, shall we? Now let me start off by saying this lady might have been named Daisy, but she was no innocent little flower. Mm -mm. She was actually quite rude in my opinion. <laughs> anyway, she was born back um, in June of 1886. Long time ago. 1886. She was born in Grahamstown and her legal name was Daisy Louisa Hancorn Smith. Mouthful. Um, her father was William Hancorn Smith and her mother was Fanny Hancorn Smith. And she was one of 11 children. You see, this is where it starts to sound like my family. This is where it starts to make sense because we have a very fruitful family. <laughs> you just look at the same soap as a man and you before pregnant. True story. Anyway, my grandfather had 10 sisters and a brother. They were 12 children. Can you imagine the amount of Netflix accounts you're going to have to open for that household? Anyway, this is not about me. <laughs> Let's move on. Anyway, so I don't know if I mentioned, but she was born in Grahamstown. And at the age of eight, her father and her two brothers, two of her brothers, moved to Rhodesia, which is now Zimbabwe. They got a very good deal to purchase some land at an affordable price, and they moved there to start farming. Now, about two years later, when Daisy was 10 years old, she was sent to go and live with her father. Now this is 2,000 kilometers away and there was no cars and airplanes or such things. Uh, she had to climb into an ox cart with a bunch of strangers who was also moving to Rhodesia and just be on a merry way and she was 10 years old. I mean it was different times but it does sound, it doesn't sound nice. Now, I don't know what happened. There's a lot of speculation that apparently her mother abandoned them when she met a new man um, and she moved to Port Elizabeth and passed away shortly after. This is now what I'm hearing. I don't know if this is fact, but it's, it's a rumor. Um, also, civil war was brewing in South Africa, so this might also be why she was oxed off, not shipped off, oxed off to Rhodesia. Anyway, um, so there she was on her merry way, got there, nice little farm community, she went to school there. Shortly after, two of her sisters also moved to Rhodesia. 
Um, I do have plenty of questions like what happened to the other siblings? Because now it was the two brothers, Daisy, and then two of her sisters. So that's five out of the 11 children. I can't find any reference of what happened to the other five. No? Six. Six. <laughs> Math isn't mathing today. Anyway, so no clue what, what went on there. But yeah, Daisy was with four of her siblings and her father living her best life in Rhodesia. Now, at the age of 13, Daisy moved again. This time she moved on her own to Cape Town, uh, where she attended boarding school. In this time, I, I guess it was quite normal for children not to be with their parents because there wasn't like schools on every corner like there is now. So children would often be sent to school far away. But it was odd in Daisy's case because in this time it was very rare that um, girls got educated past like writing and reading level. So what I'm saying is Daisy was very privileged to have gotten this education. You know, what did she make of, of it? Did she use this privilege to be the good you want to see in the world? Spoiler alert, she didn't. <laughs> anyway, so she was here in boarding school and she was um, staying there until she was 17 years old, visiting her parents while her father in Rhodesia, every then and when, you know. Now, in 1903, uh, Daisy returned to Rhodesia for a while, and after that, she moved to Durban, where she attended nursing school, and she got her further education. Again, very privileged for her to have received this. Mm -hmm. Anyway, again, she would move, or, you know, she would visit her father and siblings back in Rhodesia, and it was there on one of her trips back home where she met Bert. Fuller. They fell head over heels in love and they got engaged. Oh, I love a good love story. Now Bert was a government worker and um, they were all set to get married in 1907. On their wedding day though, horror befell Mr. Bert. Mm -hmm. Before they even got the chance to say adieu, poor bird expired. I forgot to do a disclaimer earlier, I just want to say this video may be disturbing to some viewers and it contains things about murder and serial killers. A serial killer. Viewer discretion is advised. Okay? Moving on. So, dear old bird expired. Um, his death was ruled to be Blackwater fever. Now, as he died, our dear flower, Mrs. Daisy, was at his bedside. Now, what is this um, blackwater fever, you may ask? Well, from what I can understand, and I just have to make sure you know that I'm not a doctor, but apparently this happens when you contract the malaria fever, you know, after you've been immunized against the malaria fever. So if you've been immunized, this is really rare that this happens, but you are immunized, a malaria mosquito bites your face or your leg, I don't know, and then instead of the immunization helping and fighting it off, it turns on you and it kills you. I mean, it sounds stupid. Why? Isn't it supposed to help you? Is immunization is supposed to help you and now it's the thing that kills you. Not nice. Now, in hindsight, we can note that the symptoms of this black water fever is quite similar to poisoning. I'm just saying, leaving it out there. We'll never know though if dear old Bert was Daisy's first victim, or maybe this was what triggered her into becoming a bloodthirsty, murderous cuckoo clock. You know? We don't know. No way for us to know. Now, Daisy did receive a hundred pounds from Bert's life insurance policy. Now, in today's money, that is a hundred thousand rand. Not pocket money for a student. Great, great. 
Now after this Daisy did remain single for a couple of months and the next time we see Daisy she is sprouting up <laughs> in Johannesburg. The city of gold, you know? It was known back then as the city of gold. Now it's known as the city of bottles and criminals. But what do I know? Now it's here in the city of gold where Daisy meets William Cowell. He's a plumber and he's making quite the living for himself in this like booming gold town business. 18 months later, Daisy officially becomes Daisy Cowell. The couple enjoyed their blissful honeymoon phase in their house in Turfontaine. Mm -hmm. And it's also here where the couple would decide to start a family. Now during this time, Daisy gave birth to five children and of those five children, only one would survive. Now, I have to mention that during this time, it was quite common, unfortunately, for children to pass away. Um, medicine wasn't what it is now. There wasn't vaccines, all that business. So out of every thousand children, about 200 would pass away before the age of three, which is sad. Um, but with the advancement of medicine and all that business, by 1997, it was seven out of every thousand children. So a big advancement over there. So if we apply the math here, there's a 20% chance that the child could die before the age of three. But in Daisy's case, only 20% of her children survived. I'm just saying, you know. But of her children who passed away, she first had twins who died in infancy. I couldn't find any information on how they passed, but they died in infancy. She had a child who died from an abscess in the liver, and she had a child who suffered convulsions and bowel troubles and died at 15 months old. The only surviving child was named Rhodes Sissel. I know it sounds familiar, Rhodes Sissel. Anyway, he was born in June of 1911. Now what we can say in hindsight, the symptoms of these children's death, the ones we know about, as well as her fiance, is quite similar symptoms, even though it was caused or ruled to be from different things. There's a lot of speculation and questions about whether she was involved in the death of her children and her first fiance. A lot of people I see on the internet thinks that she did not kill her children and that maybe is part of what caused her to be the way she was. I don't know. I don't think we'll ever know. But what we can say in hindsight is that all of the deaths, all of them, had very similar symptoms. That's all. I'm just leaving that right there. Now Daisy did receive a lot of support and sympathy from the community. I mean, she's not even 30 yet. She lost a fiance and four children. That is terrible. And their first thought wasn't she's a serial killer? Obviously not. It's so unheard of. Um, they just thought, yeah, poor lady. And maybe it was. I don't know. I wasn't there. I cannot tell you. Maybe she really had just a terrible turn of luck. And that's what, you know, triggered her. Who knows? I don't know. As I mentioned, Daisy's husband was a plumber and he would often have like body aches and what what because it's hard work. And she, being the loving wallflower that she is, would always treat his body ailments with Epsom salt. Mm -hmm. I don't know what Epsom salt is. Epsom salt? What is that? I don't know. Whatever. She would treat his ailments with Epsom salt. After one of these loving treatments, he started to feel worse. He was like, something's not lucky here. I feel like cock. I feel terrible. And Daisy called the doctor. She was like, hello, help. Um, my husband is not feeling lucky. I gave him salt. Nothing inside the salt, just salt. Please come. So the doctor came. He didn't consider him to be ever like life-threatening condition or anything. He just prescribed bromite, whatever that is. I could have probably researched it, but it's medicine. So the doctor just prescribed the medicine and he was on his merry way. But Mr. Cowell did not get better. Mm -mm, mm -mm. He deteriorated and he became worse and worse 
and Wes. Now this is when Daisy asked the neighbors for help. She was like, I don't know what's happening. And the neighbors called a different doctor. And by the time the doctor arrived, Mr. Cowell was already purple in the face and foaming at the mouth. And he would unfortunately die before the doctor could even examine him. Terrible! Now it was said that Mr. Cowell was in excruciating pain. Like this was not a quick fading off into the sunset. It was terrible, excruciating. Now this doctor, to his credit, f found the whole situation to be very sus. You know, he was like, something is not right here. This looks like a poisoning to me. The symptoms is very similar to the symptoms caused by strychnine um, vergiftiging, poisoning. <laughs> strychnine poisoning. Now, the symptoms of strychnine poisoning includes convulsion, which, I mean, we can make a drinking game out of this. Every time you hear convulsion in this story, take a shot. I mean, don't really do that. That would be um, very disrespectful. I'm just saying convulsion does come up quite often. Um, now, this convulsion causes damage to the kidneys and the liver and the loss of breath, which causes you to die. It's terrible. Anyway, um, the, the doctor did not want to sign off on the death certificate and they got like a second opinion and someone did the autopsy and the autopsy said that he died from chronic kidney disease and bleeding of the brain. Now his life insurance policy also paid Miss Daisy and this in today's money would make her a millionaire. Mm -hmm. Set for life. Mm -hmm. I don't think it was enough for her though. Moving on. For the next three years, Daisy and her son was out living their best lives. You know? At some point though, Rhodes was no longer the sweet little boy that Daisy so loved. No, he was turning into a teenager and you know how those are like. You know? So she was losing some of her fondness for this boy. She's like, ugh, ugh, lost her affection. So it was at this point where their relationship became a little strained, to say the least. Now, she met a new man at this point, mm -hmm, Robert Sprout. He was also a plumber. Mm -hmm. Now, within months of meeting, Robert proposed to... Daisy. I mean, she had no problem finding a rich husband. I don't know what it was. Did she have a magic coochie? <laughs> Sorry. Now, within months of meeting, Robert proposed and they became itched. Mm -hmm. But the weird part is they got married on the anniversary of Daisy's first husband's death. I mean, I don't want to judge, but it's weird. Is it not weird? I think it's weird, but what do I know? Now, Robert and Rhodes did not get along at all. Mm -mm, mm -mm. Rhodes were used to having mommy dearest all to himself and his stepfather thought he was a little bit of a lazy, you know. They fought very often. Now, about two years after the wedding, Robert mysteriously fell ill. I know. What was wrong with him? Vomiting, convulsion, mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, Robert's brother was very worried. He was so worried. Where's my other blue? He was so worried that he came over for the weekend to visit his brother and to see what's watching. You know, he was very worried. Now, it's at this point where Daisy takes it upon herself to convince the distraught brother of Robert that it's imperative that Robert's life insurance policy be changed so that Daisy is the recipient. You know, it's very important. Um, apparently, Robert wasn't quite keen on changing the life insurance policy. I don't know why. Is it maybe because he's, he found the whole situation with her previous husband to be a bit sus? Or did he maybe not just get to it? I don't know. But at this point, um, Robert's brother convinces him to change the life insurance policy. Shane, let your wife, if something happens to you, you want her to be taken care of. So he changes the life insurance policy. And just after 
He mysteriously and miraculously recovers. And he's back to being healthy. Healthy as a fox. I don't think that's the sign. Healthy as a clam. No, that's happy. I don't know. Whatever. <laughs> now, just a few months later, Daisy, the sweet little flower that she is, brings her husband a beer. You had a bad day, honey. Sit down, relax, yes, a beer. And then Robert falls ill again. But this time, he would not survive. Mm -mm. Now, by the end, Robert had to be tied to his own bed because the convulsions were so bad. Can you imagine? It's terrible. And um, yeah, he passed away. After he passed, Daisy received £4,560 from her husband's estate. Her late husband's estate. In today's money, that is 4.5 million rand. Now Daisy's two deceased husbands was buried, buried, I don't know, I struggle with that word, buried, 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 I'm sorry, um, her two deceased husbands was buried side by side in the Brixton Cemetery. Now once again over the next four years Daisy and Rhodes were off living their bestest lives, they have money, everything is great. Um, Rides is unemployed and apparently a bit of a lazy and a spoiled bratty type of effect, you know. I mean, it's the way he was raised. He just got everything and they had a lot. I mean, deceased husbands is apparently a lucrative business. At this point, Daisy meets husband number three, Sydney the Malker. What did he do for a living? You guessed it, he was a plumber. Um, this is where Daisy got the surname that we all know her by, Daisy the Malker. Now Sydney was immediately smitten, smitten with Daisy. Um, magic Gucci, I'm telling you. Now he had a daughter around the same age as um, Rhodes and he treated Rhodes like he was his own son, you know, it was very nice, they got along, all was good, maybe this is the happy ever after that Daisy was searching for. It's probably at this time where you would expect me to start talking about how Sydney suddenly and mysteriously became violently ill, but no, mm -mm. Sydney wasn't the one who became ill, mm -mm. I know it's suspenseful. <laughs> Now, at some point, apparently Mr. Rhodes has gotten a job, something like mechanic -y or working on cars or something in that line. Now, one day at work, Rhodes and a co-worker shared a flask of coffee that was lovingly prepared for him by his mom, Daisy. Isn't that sweet? Now, suddenly, him and his co-worker fell ill. They were, like, nauseous, throwing up. It was Gaga buffet, but they both recovered after throwing up. Now, what we know now is that at this point, Daisy switched from strickening poisoning to arsenic. Mm -hmm. That's what we know now in hindsight. I can only imagine what her thought process was when she sent her son off to work and he came back and she was like, you know. I think it went a little something like this. What are you doing here? I thought you would be dead. On your feet. You know, from working. Mommy, I don't feel too good. I don't know. I think I'm just going to go to bed. And I hope I'll feel better tomorrow. Okay, my boy. Shame you had a bad day. Go, go to bed. Get some rest. Okay. Oh. I don't get it. Where's that? Two tablespoons. 
not teaspoons. <laughs> That's the you old so and so. We'll try again tomorrow. Did I just make a comedy skit out of a serial killer? Yes, I did. I'm sorry. It's not funny. Nothing about this is funny, but we have to laugh. Honestly, it's the only way I can cope with how horrible people can be. I'm sorry. Um, shortly after, um, Raids became ill and gotten better. He gotten ill again, and this time he did not survive. Poor thing. Sorry. I'm so unprofessional. Ow. Got it. Now Daisy stood by her son's bedside as he died an excruciating death. His death was ruled cerebral malaria. Malaria. I don't know, I'm just having a flashback to her first fiancé. I'm just saying. I am just saying. Now, why would Daisy kill her own son? That is the question. There's a lot of speculation around that. Apparently, in the last few years, all rights could talk about is how he would receive his dad's um, inheritance when he turns 21, you know? And I don't know what the story is there. Did the money ever exist? Did Daisy maybe access and use it? Or was Daisy maybe planning on taking it if her son died? Don't know. All just speculation. The other speculation is that maybe Rhodes started to know too much. I mean, he grew up with his mother. He saw what was going on. He saw that people had a tendency to die around Daisy. So maybe he was starting to put two and two together and she was like, off you go. Thought since, bye bye my son. Now what Daisy did not know at this stage was that Robert Sprout's brother at this stage was getting a big, big ick from Daisy. Now he found it quite odd that this woman, who is supposedly a trained nurse, has such a difficult time of keeping the people around her alive. Literally, she's lost everyone and everyone died with similar symptoms. You know, he thought this whole thing is a little bit sus. And he went to the police with his suspicions and he said, you know, maybe you should look into this. So the brother was at the police and the police also said, you know what, you may be right. This might be a little bit sus suspect. And they decided to exhume the bodies of the son and her two deceased husbands. First thing they noticed was that Rhodes' body was quite well preserved, which is apparently a side effect from arsenic poisoning. It preserves your body. So they did find traces of arsenic in his system and they found strychnine, po strychnine poisoning in the other two, in the husbands. Mm -hmm. And with this, Daisy got arrested. And this is where the pictures, you know the pictures of the hair? Because when I saw a picture of her when she was young, I thought, wow, she's beautiful. She was beautiful when she was young, but the image that stuck, uh, that, that, that we all remember is the one with the crazy hair, where she looked, you know, she looked a bit like a serial killer, not going to lie. Anyway, so she went on to trial. This was like, the people found it fascinating, because it's unheard of. You don't even, like, serial killers, and she's a woman, no less. It was sensational there was people at the courts and she went on trial now it's at this point where a man came forward who said you know what i don't want to cause any drama but i sold arsenic to that woman who i saw on tv or on the newspapers i don't know where was the tv back then i don't know whatever he saw the pictures of Daisy the Malkin and he came forward and he said, I sold arsenic to that woman. He kept very good record of people who bought the poison from him and there it was. She used a fake name, but she used her old husband's surname. Like if you're going to use a fake name, that is not a smart way to do it. 
Anyway, so this person said she bought the poison from him and she said she wants the arsenic powder to euthanize her cat. When I read this, I was like, ugh, disgusting, ew. Apparently back then, it was common practice to euthanize your animals using poison. Gross, I know. I know, yeah. Anyway, so this testimony from this person was the nail in the coffin for Daisy and she was found guilty for the poisoning and murder of her son. Now, strangely enough, and I did not know this up until I started researching this case, she's never been found guilty of the murders of any of her husbands. So the court said there's simply not enough evidence to find her guilty on that, but she is guilty on the murder of her son. So we speak about her as the first female serial killer in South Africa and about this um, person who killed her husband, but she was never found guilty of that. Just the son. I did not know this. Um, I don't know. I just don't know. Okay, At some point, should we not be allowed to say She's guilty based on common sense, okay? I don't know. Well, I don't know. Whatever. But she was sentenced to be executed by hanging. Yep. So that is Daisy the Malka. She just, she then got hanged. I don't know the date. I, I forgot to look up at what date. But she got executed by hanging. She always maintained her innocence. She never admitted to these crimes. What do you guys think? I see a lot of people who says, um, yes, guilty husbands, what, what. But a lot of them think she's not guilty of the fiance and the children. To me, it's just odd, okay? The fact that she killed her son, Routes, Proves to me she, she does have it in her to kill her children. Why would she do that? Well, why did she do anything that she did? I don't know. She was a she was an interesting lady. You know? Very rude. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed today's episode and let me know what you want me to talk about next. Is there any true crime? Uh, mysteries, conspiracy theories, anything that you want me to chat about, let me know in the comments down below. Remember to subscribe, like this video, it helps me out a lot and it's free for you, so just do it. Anyway, I'll see you next week on Art and Mystery. Okay, bye bye.